This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Tyler Wilson, kind enough to join us now, someone that spent many days here with us on the morning rush in the past. And Tyler, I know yesterday was a uh, a tough afternoon and a tough evening. I appreciate you returning my text because I couldn't think of anyone uh, more fitting or more perfect uh, as a teammate to honor the legacy of Ryan Mallett than you. And, uh, buddy, I appreciate you uh, getting on the phone with us earlier, the, early this morning to talk about your teammate. Well, guys, thanks for thanks for having me. I know it's uh, obviously uh, tough circumstances for anybody that was associated and close to Ryan and and our team. Uh, I think that's part of, uh, you know, the, the tough conversations and uh, communication I had with teammates last night. Uh, you just can't believe it. Yeah. Take us inside those meeting rooms and, and your first, give, give me your first memory maybe of meeting Ryan as a teammate. Um, take us back to Genesis on this with you and Ryan. Well, uh, kind of a unique circumstance. I can remember the first time I ever met Ryan, and that was in in a uh, uh, it was kind of a welcome uh, dinner. And he had just, uh, you know, I'd come up and transferred uh, up from my after my uh, graduation, and and came to the uh, came to the meeting room at Arkansas, and and it was Jerry Wright and Joe Adams and all the receivers uh, that you know were in my class, and. Ryan just announced his commitment, um, and you know, so it was kind of an interesting uh, dynamic in the room. We had two quarterbacks, and I probably, uh, honestly, would not have probably come to Arkansas had I known Ryan was coming. Um, so, you know, it was uh, what I remember was the, probably the tallest guy I've ever ever played with. Uh, you know, coming from high school, I just looked at this guy and said, "Man, this this is." about the biggest guy I've ever seen and, and he can throw it. Um, it, but he had a contagious personality. That's what I remember. I mean, it's just, you walk in a room and, and he'd smile and he'd, he'd high five and, and he brought a swagger and a dominant personality to any room he walked in. And, uh, that's what I remember first. You know, Tyler, it's interesting you say that I always felt like and you exhibited this quality, and other great quarterbacks exhibit this quality. Um, you make everybody around him want to be better. And I always got the sense from Ryan that, you know, particularly the receivers, particularly the guys on offense, that, you know, there was the belief that, hey, if we'll just execute our assignment, he'll take us there. Um, talk, if you would, about just that that relationship he had and the belief that, his teammates had in him? Well, I think, you know, you, you wonder why the state of Arkansas uh, identified as strongly as they did with, you know, Ryan. I mean, I, I just, I remember one, he's just a good player, but, but also the locker room, you know, there was an identification with, with, with Ryan Mallett from, from many of the players in, in our rock, locker room. And, and, you know, I think we were transitioning, uh, from a from a Houston Nut era uh, to a Bobby Petrino era, and there was there was a polarizing disconnect in in the locker room, um, you know, with, with with a lot of those uh, Nut players, uh, and you know he was the bridge the gap, um, and you know I think a belief that w- a lot of those young players that weren't ready to play uh, needed somebody that that had that mentality that was just uh, that was, you know, that, that don't give a, don't give a darn mentality. And, you know, we're, 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 we've got one direction and that's, that's, we're going to win. Uh, Ryan, I think because he was always a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, uh, a little more talented. And, you know, he was the number one player in the country quarterback wise and had gone to Michigan and seen things and, uh, Everyone and everyone wanted a piece of that. Uh, they wanted to be, you know, the best. And so, as a result, he got that instant credibility in, in the locker room. And uh, I think that's. I really think that that's probably the biggest, uh, you know. And, and we're talking about it, you know, from a football perspective today. And there's a whole lot more to discuss with Ryan. But 
that that's what I noticed in the locker room, and he just had a contagious contagious spirit, and was was the reason that we really lifted uh, that 2010 season, and and even the year before that, he was he was the key to make that happen. I always thought his relationship with Coach Petrino was interesting. That you know, gosh, he loved his ability. I think sometimes he drove him crazy. Um, tell us what that was like. They did have a unique relationship. You know, Ryan probably had a much closer relationship to Bobby Petrino than I ever had. Um, you know, there were probably more visits to, to Coach Petrino's office than I, than I had. And you know, I was I was uh, I was laughing a little bit and crying a little bit last night in memory. Um, you know, sometimes it's the it's the brother that uh, I didn't I never had a brother. But uh, it's the brothers that that uh, sometimes you you disagree with or you you have tough moments with that uh, you don't realize how much they mean to you um, and what they mean to you uh, until you know you, you don't get to have a conversation with them anymore and uh, you know that relationship not only with me but with Petrino was 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 different. And uh, I know there were tough days where, where probably Bobby uh, uh, had those had those disagreements and those uh, uh, frustrations, and they probably had them with each other. Um, but but the truth is, I, I know there's probably no quarterback, and in, in, including me, that, that Coach Petrino enjoyed coaching more than Ryan Mallett. You've seen him transition. You saw him transition, uh, transition <clears throat> into adult life, just as you have. Um, tell us what you've seen, what you saw over the last ten years. I know sometimes it was from afar. It seemed like you had a, you know, a guy who matured and a guy who, as we were discussing, was really comfortable at the ball field and coaching kids. And it seemed as though he'd kind of found his niche there. I think you know. Uh, I think as, as as kids, we all, we all love ball, and some of us, you know, grow up and and as we as we get older, we we phase out of ball, and and uh, you know, we get into other things, and and uh, I think I think you know the the brilliance to to Ryan not only is you know when we were in college and and before college is. He was a baller. Uh, I mean, he, he, that's what he, that's what he, you know, lived for. And, you know, most of the time as a player, you can, that weeds out a lot of, a lot of people, uh, how much they care about uh, the game of football and the locker room and the teammates and, and uh, the wanting to win. And, uh, you know, I can, I can usually say the people that get into coaching and get into, um, you know, the, the world of, of football after they're done playing, those people really love it. And Ryan was one of those people. That's what he, he that's what he got up to do every, every morning. And that's what he wanted to do. Um, he, he wanted to figure out how to win and he wanted that locker room and that, that team mentality. And, that's why he was so special. And I think every teammate at the university of Arkansas, again, uh, sure there's, there's moments and we're all flawed and have our own imperfections, but there was nobody that was a teammate of Ryan Mallett that could, couldn't say that, that he, he would, he would, he would give them everything, uh, in, in the moments when you needed it. Former Hawk quarterback Tyler Wilson with us here on the Morning Rush. Tyler, you mentioned earlier there's much more to Ryan than just on the football field. What are some things that come to your mind off the football field? Well, I just I think you know Chuck mentioned it there is, is you know he he did you know there was there's a coaching aspect to Ryan, and uh, although the on the football field with the big arm and the big talent and the, you know, if, you, if you're picking a uh, way to sum him up, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, the John Daly of, of Arkansas football. It's, there's a, there's a lot of similarities. I mean, I know they were close and good friends, but 
you know, that's my perspective on the field and off the field. Uh, you know, he was a cheerleader. He was, he was an inspiration. A lot of people just, again, he had that instant credibility. They wanted to know, you know, what he had to say and what he thought. And, uh, you know, he, he was a motivator and, uh, you know, you talk about off the field, and I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one of my one of my biggest moments in my career, and this isn't about me, uh, would have been you know at Auburn in 2010 when Cam Newton's on the other side, and the, probably one of the biggest games Arkansas's played in, uh, uh, you know, in, in the last several years, and. Uh, you know, it was a it was a moment for him, uh, head to head against Cam Newton, uh, trying to trying to win the Heisman Trophy. We trying to win a ball game, but you know the, the the other headline in that game was Cam Newton Heisman Trophy candidate versus Ryan Mallett Heisman Trophy candidate, and probably the winner of that game would would be the front runner of the Heisman moving forward. And Ryan gets uh, as, as some of you might know, Ryan gets uh, knocked out of that game just before halftime, but I come in at halftime and uh, they acknowledged that, you know, he wasn't going to come out. And what I remember is Ryan looked me dead in the eye and said, go get him, man. And he gave me a high five. And, you know, so many people, I think you can, you can, you can determine the heart of a person by how they uh, react in their own situation. And, that's not the circumstance Ryan wanted. That wasn't the uh, outcome that he wanted. He didn't want to give that football team up at halftime uh, in the biggest game of his career to that point, in the biggest game of, of, of our season. And uh, he did it selflessly, and he didn't stay in the locker room. He came out, and he came out on the field, and he was at times on the field probably as much as anybody that was on that sideline could be, but he was – he was giving encouragement to everybody and high fiving me every step along the way, and I will I will never forget that that his supports a teammate in that moment. That was a very tough moment for him. Man. Tyler, hard to believe you, you know all you guys were talking about these memories and those teammates. You know, you, you guys are all in your thirties now. You got careers, you got families, and I know people get busy. And unfortunate moments like this bring teammates back together. And I'm sure there's been a lot of text and phone calls and memories shared. Uh, Share what you can, but what's that been like the last 12 or 15 hours is I'm sure you've heard from and reached out to several teammates from that era that, that y'all shared that experience with. What What's kind of the sentiment and what, what, what's that moment, what, what are those moments like for you here in the last 12 or 15 hours? Well, like you said, you hate to, you hate to uh, rally around somebody um, when the circumstance is this. Um, but our, I think our teammates have, have all kind of circled. And, um, you know, I think you also can understand the impact of a person when, um, you know, regardless of their on-field talents, but just their impact on anybody's life when you see the effects of it and uh, the connection amongst the, the other players in the locker room. Um, and... Travis Swanson called me last night and was extremely emotional. Uh, talked to Jake Beckett and uh, Niall Davis texted me last night. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I sent a text to, to Garrett McGee, our quarterback coach. Uh, Garrett probably knew Ryan as good as anybody. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, uh you've, you feel like the movie Rambo, you know, um, when, when he's saying, uh, uh, you know, you're paging, paging your boy. And, uh, it's in a text to McGee. And I said, man, we lost one five last night. And, uh, uh, we shared some, some intimate uh, memories and, and, uh, conversations and it just doesn't, doesn't feel right. Well, Tyler, it's great to hear your voice. I hate the circumstances, uh, in which we're catching up, but I can't think of anyone that could, honor their teammate and talk about Ryan's legacy better than you. And we appreciate your time this morning. Well, I know Razorback nation's grieving. I know teammates are grieving and, um, he was very special to, to a lot of people. And I think there'll be so many people that, uh, that, uh, hopefully, um, are able to, 
to uh, talk through this together and support family and friends that were closest to him. And um, I know that uh, there'll be great conversation in his memory, uh, the best that we can anyway. All right. well, let's chat again when football season gets here under uh, more cheerful circumstances. Tyler, uh, take care, and we'll, we'll talk soon. Thank you, guys. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.